question about aliens so when was the first time you started paying attention to aliens I didn't I didn't pay attention to aliens it's like I saw I saw on the internet you see the um, it's called UFO files it gave you because UFO files mm -hmm. UFO files UFO files yeah. what um what got you interested in the alien research okay I watched the UFO files Ask me something like you know philosophical like how do you know that it could be could there be other other races or other aliens or ask me something like that at the start. Um, so if there <laughs> is an alien, if the aliens right, kind of if thing. aliens are something real, if aliens are real, how does it affect our everyday lives? That's a little bit too deep, and I'm not gonna get into that. It's a little, it's a little too deep, but. Uh, I mean, the alien question so. is a big question. Did you know that? Did you know that there's a lot of movies that are produced sci-fi, sci-fi movies, science fiction movies, involving aliens and stargates and. You, you, did you know that? Yeah, in the '90s, in the 2000s, you know, there's a thing called Stargate SG One. You know, have you ever heard of that? Stargate SG. You ever heard of Stargate SG One? You okay? You tired? You okay? <laughs> okay. You, you never watched Stargate SG-1? Have you ever heard of it? Oh, come on. I mean, I don't watch TV, and, it, and I've seen that. I mean, I've seen it. I mean, I've seen that it exists. This thing. Come on, you're a little out of it. I mean, come on. What? <laughs> There's a, a lot. Of, what about Star Trek? You ever seen Star Trek? Come on. What planet are you from? Are you from this planet or are you from somewhere else? This planet. No television? I had television growing up. What, what, what did you watch on television? It's, it's just unbelievable. What did you watch on television? What uh, did you watch? <laughs> Boy Meets World and football and <laughs> friends. Mr. Victorville, football and friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, okay, so there's a lot. That, what happened was in the 1950s, many, many, many of these film projects were produced. Mm -hmm. You yeah? know? Like, Every almost every movie, a lot of a lot of movies or a lot of movies were made, a lot. You know, the NSA or whatever, they're not gonna like this picture. They'd be like, um, so in the nineteen fifties, there was a lot of movies produced, mm -hmm. like you know, Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman. You know. It's, there's one that I want to see with these giant ants. You ever see this one with these giant ants? Like ants, like fucking 20 foot long ants. Like, it has this weird sound, like this scary sound of these ants. Mm -hmm. I gotta see that one. Hmm. Lots of these movies. You can see them on YouTube. You can see these movies. You can see a lot of these movies on YouTube. Do you know, and, and these were made in the 1950s. Do you know why they were made in the 1950s? Why? Because to distract people or the mass of the public to get them away from the alien issue being a real issue. Because in 1952, in 1952, they flew over the White House and the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. They kind of flew over, like really flew over and were looking around and stuff and kind of, actually they were probably trying to actually land and meet and talk to the president. Mm -hmm. right. The good thing about this subject is that, you know, when you talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. When you talk about it, you know, that, that, that's, that works in the favor of, of, of confusion, okay? You know, when you talk about it, some people are going to be ha ha ha, you know, a lot of funny and laughter like, oh, this is, you know, a joke, this is bullshit, so that works in your favor, okay? I mean, it can work in your favor if you use it the right way. There's a girl on the internet, a woman on the internet. Well, I mean, on the internet, you can see her. A woman, you can see through, uh, you, know, you can see her, listen to her. Laura Eisenhower. Did you know Laura Eisenhower? Laura Eisenhower is actually the daughter or granddaughter? Oh, come on, kid, are you paying attention? Laura Eisenhower. Yeah, Laura Eisenhower. It's the daughter or granddaughter of... 
President Eisenhower. In the 1950s, President Eisenhower made speeches about the military-industrial complex and about other things, and, and he had contact with some of the different races and stuff. And uh, there's a lot of guys on the internet now talking about this stuff. Uh, um, uh, Corey Good. Corey Good is one of the guys. Hey, David water. Wilcock. And a lot of others. Uh -huh. And uh, Corey Good and David Wilcock, um, you know, they know a lot about the different races. Avatar was a, a movie um, made about the, the Blue Avians. So, so there was this Avatar is based upon I mean, Blue Avian. Yeah, Avatar is based upon real. It's based upon real. It's based upon real stories. Re reality is based upon reality. You know, like if there's a you know Charles Manson or whatever, then they'll make movies based upon Charles Manson and what he did. You know, in reality, it's based upon a real person, right? See, let's say, like, uh, you know, Bigfoot sightings or whatever, right? There were some real Bigfoot sightings, and they make movies based upon those real Bigfoot sightings. Because the, that's the way the idea comes from. Okay. Um, and so Laura, Laura Eisenhower is actually kind of like, I mean, she, the way she talks, I think Laura Eisenhower actually, she's good. She's got great information and everything. But a lot of this stuff, that, the way she talks, the videos and stuff, it actually works you know, to kind of discredit, I think, the whole stuff that she's saying. Because she looks like she's got a little bit of, um, you know, Crazy? Yeah, a little bit out there. I mean, Why? I'd say out there. Because it's just almost like she's talking to herself. I mean, she's talking that direction. She's, like, looking in different directions and mumbling to herself. And then, and, 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 It I just mean, comes off to say, Yeah, exactly. Like, some people come off, like, believable. Others are like, oh, my God. <laughs> what the... Damn, I mean... Whoa. Mm. Man, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then some people are really bad, but uh, and did you know that on purpose, on purpose they introduced Jackie Gleason, bosses, and, and, and they brought Jackie Gleason to look at some of the. Did you know that? B S Johnson. You didn't BS, know that. Did B S Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason is the guy from Smoking the Bandit. Oh. I'm gonna barbecue your ass in molasses. Get your ass back here, you. Fucking stinking motherfucker! I'm gonna get that guy right away. That's Jackie Gleason. But in, they showed him tanks with some of the gray aliens stored in these tanks. Mm. Understand? So that he goes out there and starts talking to people. See what I'm saying? About what he saw. <laughs> and now there's the, the idea is to get him to make a lot of interviews and a lot of talk to a lot of people, right? This way he talks to a lot of people. And now people are like, Jesus Christ, this alien nonsense, are you, why, you've been drinking again. Go home and sleep it off. Are you crazy? What the fuck? In order to try to make it uh, nonsense. There's a lot of sightings in the 70s, there's a lot in the 80s. In, in Mexico, there was a whole lot of stuff going on in Mexico where people were looking up and, and, and seeing a lot of things. Did, did you see up right? Oh, sorry. I think Laura Eisenhower comes off as, as, you know, and there's this guy called Rex Bear. Have you seen Rex Bear? Rex, Rex Bear. On YouTube. Yeah, Rex Bear. Rex Bear is paid by, by some of these, accepts money from some of these dark, dark agencies and stuff. He just accepts the money and then uh, makes a lot of stuff that is uh, making fun of people, right? Um, dramatizing or blowing things out of proportion or making fun of people, you know, it makes it look like it's, it, it's craziness, it's, it's crazy, yeah. Mm. And his name is Rex Bear. He interviewed Laura, Laura Eisenhower, and when she was talking, he drew out this, took out a picture, and she was a big gray alien with the giant eyes, and he said, oh, like this, like this, like this, like this, says, this alien's name is Lam, Lam. Lam? Lam, L-A-M. And there's a report of this alien that's called Lam, and that's how he looks, big eyes, and says, oh, it's just like this. Just like this. I've seen him. I've seen him. It's Lamb. It's Lamb. He's coming. Lamb is coming. Lamb is coming. And, you know, it just looks like, damn, dude, what have you been smoking? I mean, holy shit, you know, I think this is, the, <laughs> this is it, man. This alien is going to take you away. It's going to pull you out of this interview. Mm -hmm. Pull you out of the thing. <laughs> so he, and he pulled that in the middle of the Laura, Laura Eisenhower talk. Keith, can you sit up straight? Come on. Nope. And, and Delora Eisenhower, I think, but some interviews look okay. Like, 
you know, some, she's talking, she looks pretty professional and stuff, but she tends to ramble on and on and on about this and that and this and that. And, and the perception, you know, the perception is a big deal. The way people see it, you know, the way people see it, like if they, if it's believable, if it's believable, or if it's not, not believable. Yeah. Um, so the perception is a big deal. Probably one of the best guys who's the most believable is Stanton Friedman. You know Stanton Friedman? Okay, let's look it up. Stanton Friedman. It's a Jewish guy with big glasses. He wears the, those the, you know, clear glasses. Where's the professional guy. He has a big beard. A big, uh, you know, an actual like, big beard. And it looks good, like a Jewish rabbi. Like a Jewish rabbi. His name is Stanton Friedman. Mm -hmm. And he's a PhD. And he, a PhD in, and he knows uh, uh, a PhD of uh, Science. like... Particle physics or something, nuclear physics or something like that. It's a PhD, and he's specialized. He's very, very, very much. He is. Uh, he's a he's a big he's a big UFO and alien guy. Keith. He's a big UFO and alien guy. Big. I mean, he speaks a lot about it. He knows all the cases. And he's very well doc. He's a PhD. He knows all about all the cases about what the government says about it, and what the Hall of Records, and you got the um, thing is called the uh, um, there's a thing I forgot what it's called. It's kind of like a Library of Congress or something. Arch National Archives. So he knows about the National Archives, the Library of Congress, and everything. He knows all about that stuff. Okay, but yes, in general, in general, the 1950s was, was a boom time. The 1950s was, that's when this shit was hitting the fan. Okay. That's when there's a lot of sightings. And, and some came right down and landed in people's backyards. And they, Why um, was that the boom time? Because just a couple of years ago, uh, America was attacking the Germans. In the Germans, 47, 45. Yeah, the Germans were attacking everybody. They declared war against everybody. The Germans attacked France, Britain. Uh, not Britain, France, uh, Africa, they, they were attacking, they were just expanding a military empire. Oh. And then the Russians were involved. The America, it was a gigantic war. The whole world was fighting and stockpiling weapons and everything. Right. So why was uh, the 1950s a boom time for UFO sightings? They came and they started saying, what is going on here? You know, what What is the situation? Why are we blowing ourselves up if we're supposed to be advancing? We're supposed to be intelligent beings, right? Supposed to be smart beings, right? You're smart? I'm smart, right? You're not going to take out a gun and shoot me, and, and I'm going to take a gun and shoot you. It sounds like a one-way ticket to die. So what is going on here? They came to investigate what is the situation. What is, uh, why is everybody blowing each other up with bombs? And frankly, then, uh, the nuclear was apparently a real issue. The nuclear bombs was apparently a real issue. Once... They started testing and dropping nuclear bombs. That is what got some of this attention for some of these, uh, some of their uh, these uh, racists were really concerned at that point. And they flew right in. They flew right in um, to Roswell, uh, Roswell uh, Army Air Station, Boise, Roswell, Army. New Mexico. They can you can look at it's very UFO well documented. They flew right in there and were looking around where where the uh, you know where the uh, they're trying to get involved I guess trying to shut it down or whatever. Ever since they've been in very involved with the nuclear thing and and, and have sightings around uh, nuclear installations and stuff like that. And uh, so they got very involved with the Roswell thing and uh, I think it was the 49th or 47th Air Group that was the one with the actual nuclear bomb on the plane. And that was flying over to Japan to drop the bomb on Hiroshima. And that was the actual was air station. Bomb? Yes, a nuclear bomb. Did they drop 1945. Two nuclear bombs were dropped on Japan. One in Hiroshima, one in Nagasaki. I thought that was like a, something different called a different bomb. Like a hydrogen like atomic, a atomic Atomic. Atomic. Not a, not a. Whatever. It is a nuclear reaction. Not a nuclear bomb. It's not a normal bomb. It's a bomb that's like. You know, a thousand times more powerful than a special bomb. Nuclear bomb. So Hiroshima was the first one. Nagasaki was the second one. He wiped out the whole 
town and the one bomb and then the other one was even bigger and that was an even more advanced model and they used that on Nagasaki that ended the war in Japan they were like we're done with this we can't fight you they, exactly they, they didn't have any bombs like that to fight that they had nothing like that and uh, in a way to deliver it yeah, they had nothing like that how do they make a bomb like that like, it was what, made, what's the science behind that? It was made in a clandestine top secret project called the Manhattan Project. It was done up in Washington State, up in Washington State, a place called the Hanford Site. It's a public record, it's very well known. A place called the Hanford Site. The Hanford Site is. But at the time, it was very private. At the time, exactly. Everybody was compartmentalized. If I'm a worker there, I go to my one workstation and don't do anything else. I don't talk to anyone. So, how do they test it? That test these things to see if they work. Want some people develop the actual nuclear material, others develop the bomb casing, others develop the detonator and, and the shape of the bomb, and others. That's work. really how it worked. That's public records that they they. You look it up on the internet. Hanford site. It's still radioactive today. They probably still made nukes for a long time for the fifties and sixties and seventies at the Hanford site. It's finally getting shut down today in the year twenty nineteen. They're finally shutting it down. Why are they Hanford shutting it down? So they've been they've been continuing to make more and more nuclear weapons. That was in the forties. So you're telling me that they've it's still been going on? Like they're exactly. developing brand new they must have a bomb that could take out half of America by now. Now you're in yeah, you're you're you're, you're you know, you're you are you are you are thinking logically. You're thinking pretty logically. <laughs> the Russians in the nineteen fifties had a bomb called the Tsar Bomba which was the biggest bomb of all time. It made a damage to the atmosphere when they dropped it. They dropped it in somewhere in Russia, remote Russia. It's called the Tsar Bomba. It was supposed to be way bigger than anything the Americans ever... It was the biggest bomb in the world that was ever dropped. And they dropped it in remote they Russia. Dropped it in Russia is so big, this, almost all of Russia is, is just trees and mountains. There's only and tiny cities. And they dropped it somewhere out there? Yeah, they flew out with an airplane way up into the atmosphere because so, they knew they might get blown up by their own bomb, by the airplane. So they, it's called the Tsar Bomba. T-S-A-R. Tsar Bomba. And they dropped it, and then it hit the atmosphere. You could see the atmosphere like disintegrating as the bomb. And they flew away at the airplane really quick, and then the bomb was just. You and saw it, a video spelled, of it? Yeah, you can see the video. It's called what? the Tsar Bomba. T S A R. That's the up to date. That was the largest bomb when was dropped this? in history. When was this? That was probably fifties or sixties. Oh, dude, there's, there's bombs way bigger than that than by now. But I don't know why yeah, but what what is going on? And this is the same question that, that some of these alien races are. Right? What is going on? How come they're developing more more technology, and you need to develop spiritually, not develop the technology? What do you want to just burn it, and kill everybody? What the fuck is going on here? Man, what's going on? So, you, what well, you said? There's bombs more advanced than that. Oh, why? There shouldn't be. But there, there shouldn't be. But that was almost 20, 70 years ago now. That biggest star bomb. So imagine by now it must be like something that can take out half the planet if or something. Yeah, but why would you? Yeah, want that? why would you want uh, that? Really? Though? Right. Because That's so it's, true. It's, why, would it's, you, why would you even make something like that? Exactly. Or exactly. desire to to it, kill yourself and everybody else? Like why? Exactly. And that is the that is the reason that these war is the weirdest thing in ever yes. ever invented, isn't it? War, like war, why? You're well, kill each other? yeah, it's a very distra- It's done for money and power. Like I'm, I'm more powerful than you, right? So now you have to do exactly what I said, or we'll kill you. That's basically what it's based on, right? Like I can invade Mexico. I can just, I have enough power to destroy all of northern Mexico. So now all you guys have to lay down and do exactly what I said, and let me take over, get off the land. I own everything now. That's what it's based on. Just sheer greed, sheer greed, greed, and and, and, and total evil and greed. The corruption of a man, or man's hearts, man's hearts. Yeah, but what we're seeing now, we're seeing that a lot of people in the world are. Can you, can you sit up, please? You can sit up for another ten minutes. Come on. I'm listening. To him. It's not. It's not looking good on camera. All right. It's looking like shit. All right. Thanks. That's better. So what we're seeing. Thanks for. I really appreciate it, Keith. I really appreciate it. What we're seeing now is that we're seeing that a lot of countries on the world have realized that there's a group, the cabal and the dark shadow cabal, that is trying to. One, depopulate, means kill off people, kind of decrease the population so they can control them better, right? Uh, two, they're trying to develop a lot of evil technology to control and, 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 and you know, they, or they were, they were. This is, this is post, because they're in the middle of the Great Awakening, you know what the Great Awakening is? 2012, Mayan calendar. 20, once the 2012 is passed, we're now post-2012. Mayan calendar's turn, we're entering a new age. The Great Awakening is happening right now, after 2012 means everybody 
is waking up. Hopefully. In some cases, they have no choice. They have to wake up. Because some of the evil guys, the evil shit they're doing, is getting exposed, literally. And what it's doing is they can't get away with the stuff anymore. Because it almost immediately gets exposed. Right? Imagine you're some big senator or whatever. You go around, like, uh, you know, murdering people and stuff like that. Right? Mm -hmm. There'll be people on your ass right away finding that and seeing that. Okay, seeing what you're up to. They'll be on your ass right away. The news stories will come out on the internet right away of what you're doing, and it'll be publicized right away, and you'll be stopped or defunded right away. Because of the amount of investigators, because of the way to publish it, it's published instantaneously, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the 1950s, in order to publish something to the world, it had to go to the newspapers. See, it had to be a story. You had to submit it to the newspapers. The newspapers had to say, okay, we'll, we'll print it. We'll print it, you know? And then when they printed that, um, you know, um, when they printed that, you know, they're not going to say, okay, okay, anything. They only print certain stories, you know? They print it, uh, you know, print, uh, okay, we'll print it. We'll print this thing. Why would they say, okay, they only print the stuff, you know, that they want to print. They print propaganda, print what the rich people say, right? Print what the George W. Bushes say, right? They print, you know, the oil and some different stories and stuff, you know, the 40s and the 50s. They print newspaper. Newspaper is done for entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. And because and, and, people need to understand that with a newspaper, was there ever any real news journalism? Yes and no. I mean, not really. Big stuff, right? But newspaper is not really newspaper, it's not really journalism, you know? It's more like, you know, it's entertaining stories, right? It's something interesting, something amazing, something to catch people's attention and inspire them. Or something like stock market is going crazy because Henry Ford has built his 33rd thousand vehicle, you know? It's like big stories, right? journalism is more like um, unbiased, right? Right, like, exactly. It's, you know, kind of like true journalism really didn't start until maybe the 70s or 80s with the personal camcorder and video cord. That's one, because then people are like really kind of pointing the cameras around and questioning things. With no, you know. uh, with no like. Right, could you sit up a little better, please? Another five minutes, is that right? Okay, I'm gonna go put my clothes in the dryer. Okay, so what part was I on? The journalism, the newspaper. See how one subject leads to another. Oh. It's actually That's a pretty nice. good. It's actually a pretty good discussion. I gotta talk a little louder for the camera to pick it up. Mickey. Okay, so it's actually an interesting question. So yes, obviously, if. Um, you know, if you're having an adventure, having a lot of, you know, you're not bored, there's a lot going on, right? You're having a good time, you're excited, you've got fascinating things going on, then time seems to go, time, time seems to pass by, right? And, and if it's very boring, you know, then time seems to not pass by. It seems to go really, really slow, like, man, it's just, just boring, and then, and then you're just used to this more boring life, and it just goes, you know, um, you said it's a really boring life, you know, like classroom or something. It just seems to go boring and slow. It's, you know, it just seems to go slower. But it is going at the same time. Like, there's still 24 hours for every day, right? The sun is still, you know, it's still 24 hours for every day. Mm. Right? Mm. I mean, that makes sense, right? Mm. So, when you're having a good time, it's fascinating or something just exciting. It, exciting is the word people usually use for that, right? then it seems like, wow, the day went by really quick, you know, I wasn't waiting around forever and just, because people, boring is like boring, you know, people don't like to be bored, they like to do fascinating things, right, it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to make money while you're doing fascinating things, it's great, like the, that's why so many people like the entertainment, so you try to get involved with the filmmaking and the entertainment, because, you know, it's like fascinating and you get paid, do it too, you're not going to have people work for free, you're going to get paid by working. So that's why there's so many people that are interested in that. You know, imagine like looking at the clock and like making little notes as the time goes by and having to sit at a table like just keep track of the time. It would be very, very, very boring. But if you get paid like ten dollars an hour, it'd still be like, man, do I really have to sit here like I'm getting paid ten dollars an hour, but I have to sit here like staring at the clock making little notes? Mm -hmm. See, people, most people would after after maybe one day, two days, one week of that, they'd be like. Man, you know, I don't want to do this. I got better things to do with my life. I'm gonna go out there, build buildings, or do neat things, right? So only the person that's like really kind of more of a dumb person and just, you know, would be satisfied with that would go for something like that, right? 
you know, they like make ten dollars per hour, but you know, he's sitting at looking at the clock, making tiny little notes, and just staring at like the clock as it goes by, and making little notations. You know, for hour after hour after hour is a break at like twelve. You know, then hour after hour after hour is a break at Dude, up to like sucks. eight p.m. That that's an example of like really boring, right? Yeah, it's pretty horrible. It's yeah. I mean, that's 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 how it is. And a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of business, a lot of a lot of jobs, you know. Yeah, so, but 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 I mean, if you really had to like sit there and just look at the clock, make like little notations, like most jobs, you can talk to someone, you know, you can have some fun, talk to someone, be be interesting, talk to watch TV, you got a TV going over there, maybe you're serving up drinks, or you know, it's more interesting than that, you know, it's, uh, right? I mean, classrooms are pretty boring. You see what I'm saying? Well, this is an example of a classroom, like going to class, I have to like sit in this room with nothing going on, and the teacher eventually comes in, straightens his stuff, says, "Hi, class, how you doing?" And, uh, and he like gets out and starts you know saying my name is Mr. Mr. A. Johnson. This is the third class of the fourth part. I mean, if you'd have to do that all uh, after three That's hours, boring, it would be really wow, boring. Wow, wow. But you like that atmosphere. Huh? Yeah, I'm just saying most people. I don't like it either. And most people, you know, you don't like that atmosphere. No, and most people it'd be very boring. I mean, if you had to do that as a job every eight hours a day, every day it would be really boring. You know, it's unbelievably boring. So people, I you like this call the time the would, we're getting we're getting away from the point. What was the point? That is a slow. The life seems to go really slow and really boring, right? Right. But the interesting thing is that people adapt to routines. Mm -hmm. They really do. After a while, you'll find it's really easy. You show up to work, do your thing, then sit in the chair, and then count the things on the clock. Eventually, it's it's 12, and they get out after a little break, smoke and eat something, then come back or whatever, get something to eat, come in, and then, and then do more checking the clock, or, um, you know, more checking the clock, and you know, until like 5 o'clock, then you get to clock out and go home and go home and sleep, you know. So, you know, I mean, people get, get used to routines. They get used to routines, and then and then it starts to become normal and get used to routines. So what was the point? That is slow, and exciting is exciting. Most people like to do interesting things, or it's an example of like, you know, boring versus uh, interesting and exciting. Right, yes. mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the the time issue, and and you brought up the issue of why like, this time goes slower, and you said it goes backwards, or you think it goes backwards? What do you mean backwards? Like I said that. If you're if things are interesting, you're doing stuff that's interesting and fascinating. Uh -huh. It seems that the time goes faster. Faster. It passes faster. If there's nothing going on, it's extremely boring. It seems the time goes slower. Correct. Right. All right. So that, that that's basically how it works, and it's I a perception. Think, it's perception, right? I think like uh, yeah. I don't know why. I think when you're challenged, when you're being challenged in like, uncomfortable, when you're uncomfortable, and you're like, life is challenging you in some ways, and you're just not comfortable, like you don't know what's going to happen next, time goes very, very slow. Like three days can feel like three weeks, you know? Let's say that again. I didn't when get you're it. challenged, when you're uncomfortable, when you're in a new environment, when you don't, when you're not used to what's going on, and you're like trying to figure it out. Three days can feel like three weeks because you're, because it's, yeah. Challenged and uncomfortable? Then three days could feel like three weeks? It yeah. feels longer? Yeah. And then versus when you're in your comfort zone and you're in your environment and you don't have anything that's new or challenging, time will just seem to go by very, very fast, you know? Interesting. Like, you know? Okay, so it looks like you're making... That's, my, that's what I think. All right. So it looks like you're making a different comparison. You're, you're making kind of... It's confusing. The comparison you're making is, is very confusing to me. Because I'm making the comparison of if it's boring, it seems to go by slow. So. If it's interesting, like watching movies all the time or driving through traffic to here and then making deliveries or whatever, maybe that's... A good example, maybe it's not. Maybe you know, doing kind of fascinating things that it'll seem to go by faster, you know, and and, and not boring. So I'm mean, making a comparison of how does it seem to go by slowly, taking forever. You don't like it, and really the question I think is that you know, what do people like to do? They like to do interesting things versus sitting around doing nothing. 
sitting around doing nothing is, is something they don't like to do because it's just like I don't get to do anything boring just boring mm -hmm. and, and what you said is something else what you said is that if you're in your comfort zone it seems to go by faster mm -hmm. if you're out of your comfort zone it seems to go slower I mean that may be possible as well I don't see that may be possible mm -hmm. as well